If you haven't yet upgraded from PF Sense Community Edition version 2.6 to version 2.7, this video might be for you. I'm about to upgrade a system. Um, it has no VGA output, so I'm kind of flying blind on this at the moment where I am. Um, but we're going to follow best practices. They are take a backup of your system. Once you have a full system backup, um, I'd also recommend you have ISO images for to be able to download PFSense in case something goes pear-shaped, both the current version and the version that you want to upgrade to. Um, once you've took your backup, remove any packages from the system and then reboot the system. The reason that you're removing any packages is because the upgrade from FreeBSD 13, which 2.6 runs on, to FreeBSD 14 that 2.7 uses is quite major and PHP 7.4 is end of life in FreeBSD. Um, so upgrading PHP 7.4 to 8.2 is quite a big deal. So you'll want to remove any packages just so they don't break anything. Um, now that being said, I would generally not even bother doing the upgrade route. I usually take hardware with me with 2.7 installed, a completely fresh install. I will then restore, uh, sorry, take the backup of 2.6 and just restore it onto the 2.7 machine. Even if the hardware is slightly different, it's not an issue because you can open the config file, um, edit any interface names if you need to, and then just restore it. If it's identical hardware, there's really nothing to mess about with. You just take the backup off one and restore it on the other. And that is the most simplest way to do it and generally the way I do it. I wouldn't try doing a 2.6 to 2.7 upgrade remotely, which is why I'm on site in a funny location and with limited camera equipment to do that. But this video is about how to upgrade from 2.6 to 2.7, so let's do just that. Okay, so the recommended procedure is first, go ahead and take a backup if you've not done that before. Um, head over to Diagnostics, select Backup and Restore. Um, you want to backup all. Um, make sure this um, isn't ticked. You do want to backup your package information. You don't need to backup the stats. Um, if you need to backup extra information, um, you can do if you're using captive portal and you, or you want to back up your DHCP leases. I'm just going to leave that. Um, you'll probably want to back up your SSH keys um, and maybe encrypt the file if you need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and download this file. So now my backup has downloaded. Um, we're going to go ahead into packages. Now on this system, I've only got WireGuard installed, um, but I'm going to remove it. Confirm. Okay. So success, we've removed any packages that we have installed. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and reboot it again. Now I've Remove the packages. So we're back online. Um, I've just changed the DNS service to Google so they're not being affected by anything else. Um, we've got no packages installed, so let me just confirm that. So we've got no packages installed, we've removed them all. Um, but we did take the backup before we removed them, so we should be good. So now we're going to update. So the base system is 2.6.0 and we want to upgrade to the latest of 2.7.0. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, we've got the uh, interface back. That took probably I don't know, less than five minutes. Uh, I'm going to log back in.
Okay, so we're on 2.7.0, so we are on the latest release. Um, so the upgrade went successful. Um, so even though the upgrade's been successful, we now need our packages back. Um, obviously, we removed them all to make sure that it went smoothly. So we're going to go back into Diagnostics, and we're going to go up to uh, Backup and Restore. And you're going to select the backup file. Um, so we need to go to this bit. Uh, browse for configuration file, and we want to restore it. Uh, and then we want to restore configuration. If it's encrypted, you need to tick the, obviously, the encryption box first. So let's go ahead and restore that. So the uh, config file has been restored and the system is now just doing a reboot. So just while we're waiting for the interface, uh, I can go ahead and ping it. Um, I'll know when mine comes back online because it has a beep sound when it starts. Some systems don't have that. Um, obviously, I've got no VGA output on mine. So the only way I can tell when it comes back online is when it makes a sound or when it becomes pingable. And there we go, it's now pingable. So. Um, so when you get to this stage, um, PFSense is booting, um, the packages will be reinstalled in the background. Um, so we'll just give this a few minutes, I'll give it five minutes and then we'll take this back up again. So we've waited that out. We have a new notification. Package reinstall finished successfully. So as we can now see, our oh, WireGuard tunnel is back. It was the only package that we had. So if we go into Package Manager, then we have WireGuard reinstalled again. Yeah, and apparently, um, okay, so we are back up and running. Um, one thing that I um, didn't notice at the beginning of the video when I rebooted the system, um, it's shown it received zero bytes on our WireGuard tunnel. That's because of a routing change that I've made um, last week and I just rebooted the system. So uh, I've just corrected that error. So yes, we're all back up and running. So that was a... Um, Fairly straightforward upgrade. Let me just flick this back. So I hope this video helped. Um, a few people have been a little um, reluctant to upgrade from PFSense 2.6 to 2.7. In all fairness, it is um, a major upgrade because uh, it goes from FreeBSD 13 to FreeBSD 14, which does have a lot of issues. Um, but if you follow the practices, that went kind of straightforward. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, hit the like button, and if you hit the notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any new videos as they are released.